All right, we'll be reviewing the questions from Topical Practice Section A of Topic 18, Carboxylic Acids and its Derivatives. Let us begin with question 1. Okay, so question 1 was a previous A-level questions. Okay, so you were told that carboxylic acid can be made um, from a variety of other compounds in each of the reaction schemes, identify the intermediate compounds and suggest regions and conditions for the two steps in each reaction scheme. Okay, so the easiest way to do this question is really to number the carbon. Okay, so if, um, I mean, if it helps, we can just n number the carbon from here. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, 5. So there are 5 carbon in total. You'll notice that um, the number of carbon in the products, uh, there's only 1, 2, 3, 4. So clearly over here, one of the uh, carbon is lost, probably as a CO2. Why do I say that? Because if you take a look at this particular group here, this is what um, in organic chemistry we call a carbonate ester. Okay, so maybe I can write it down. It's called carbonate ester. Okay, so it is an ester that is formed from carbonic acids. Okay, so um, if carbon number 5 is gone, then it does make sense that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 forms the straight chain over here. So if you look at the cyano group, it is likely to be converted into a carboxylic acid. So that's carbon number 1. So carbon number 1 can be either here or right at the end, but for but I choose to put it where I put it because carbon number 2, right, eventually when hydrolysis takes place, it will become a secondary alcohol. For carbon number 4, if hydrolysis takes place, it will become a primary alcohol, which will become the next carboxylic acid. Yep, so carbon number 2 being a secondary alcohol, it can be oxidized to a ketone. So I'm going to put 2 here, and then 3 and 4. Yeah, so with this coming into the picture, you will know that um, for step 1, it is likely to be a hydrolysis reaction. So how does hydrolysis reaction work? Uh, of course, you require some acids. Okay, just heat it with some... Uh, either uh, sulfuric acids or hydrochloric acids. So I can just put uh, HCl, perhaps, aqueous, and then uh, heat. Okay, you can either warm it in the water bath or you just heat it. Uh, but of course, this case is a synthesis reaction, so we just heat it. Yep, so we're going to get um, compound A with only four carbon, so number of carbon dropped. And uh, because it is hydrolysis, so I expect carbon number four, uh, in, in this case, to become an OH. So uh, I'm just going to draw it. Um, in the same way as uh, is being drawn here. So I'm going to put HO, okay, and then uh, this is the carboxylic acids because um, the cyanogro has been uh, hydrolyzed, and then carbon number three, and then carbon number four, this would be the HO. Uh, if you do a quick calculation on the degree of unsaturation, there's one degree of unsaturation, so of course the carboxylic acid uh, group uh, remains, okay, and of course in this case, um, it is clearly obtained from uh, hydrolysis of the cyanogroup. group. Okay, then of course step two, uh, you notice that um, carbon number two and four are being oxidized to the respective ketones and carboxylic acids. So therefore, uh, step two, um, I'm going to subject the, the reaction to um, oxidation. So um, I'm going to use um, potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7. Uh, heat with uh, acidify H2SO4 and then I heat it. Okay, so carbon number 2 will be oxidized to a ketone, carbon number 4 uh, oxidized to carboxylic acid. Okay, so with the same logic, um, I can perform numbering Okay, for um, uh, uh, part 2. So uh, if I want to, this is 1, uh, 2, 3. Yep, and uh, because it's next to the final ring, so this will be 1, this will be 3, and then carbon number 2 is gone. And then uh, there are nine carbons in total. So um, uh, for step one, you notice that for B, uh, the number of carbon remains, so nine carbon. If you do a quick calculation on the degree of unsaturation, so that's 2n plus 2, 20 minus 10 divided by 2, so that's 5. Degree of unsaturation for the starting material is actually 6. Okay. And then you notice that the number of oxygen increases from... Uh, 2 to 3. Yep. So uh, over here, it's quite clear that um, because of the reduction in degree of saturation and the retention of the number of carbon, some form of hydrolysis must have taken place. And then uh, because of hydrolysis, carbon number 1 becomes carboxylic acid. Carbon number 2 uh, becomes the primary alcohol. So therefore, uh, I will be able to predict that um, compound B is likely to be 
um, a carboxylic acid at one end and then for carbon number two will be a primary alcohol. Yep, so uh, for the reagents and conditions, it will be the same. Uh, either I use hydrochloric acid or H2SO4. In this case, perhaps I use H2SO4 aqueous uh, heat. Okay, and then of course, um, in our case here, the final product is um, one, two uh, benzene dicarboxylic acid. Yeah. So in order to obtain this, what should we do? Uh, that will be that will be a global oxidation. So carbon number one, um, it's already a carboxylic acid. Yeah. But for carbon number three and two, I must allow it to undergo side chain oxidation. So for side chain oxidation, perhaps I will use KMnO four acidify with H two SO four, and then heat. Yeah. So in this case, the side chain oxidation will cause uh. The side chain, um, the second side chain, uh, to to be oxidized, and one of the carbon will become CO two, so likely to be carbon number two. Okay, yeah. So um, with that, we'll move on to question number two. Question number two is a straightforward comparison of the relative acidity of various compounds. So if you look at two A, you're asked to arrange the following compounds in order of increasing pKa. Explain your answer clearly. Okay, so increasing pKa, um, we need to uh, give what the question wants us to do. So we have to give the answers according to what is required. Increasing pKa means in uh, decreasing acidity. Okay, so um, so right now we're going to just um, divide them up into the respective uh, alcohols, carboxylic acids, phenols. So we have, um, okay, so in general, it is good to know the pKa of some of the key functional groups. So the pKa of um, carboxylic acid, so for example, ethanoic acid is about 5. pKa of uh, ethanol is about um, 16. pKa of phenol is about um, 10. Yep, so um, with that alone, then um, I'm going to put um, ethanoic acid first because it will be the most acidic one. Okay, so ethanoic acid, I'm going to put it first. And then this is followed by um, phenol. Okay, now of course phenol, uh, we are given two. Yeah, so we have to decide which is which and then of course uh, ethanol will be right at the end. So ethanol will be the least acidic of all, so highest pKa. Okay, so between 4-methylphenol and um, phenol, I'm going to expect um, phenol to be more acidic than 4-methylphenol. Uh, okay, the reason is, uh, which we're going to explain later. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in first. Okay, alright, so uh, this is a CH3. Okay, so again, um, we do not really need to, um, in, in, in our case here, right, um, what we need to do is to focus on the stability of the conjugate bases, the respective conjugate bases. Okay, so we can look at the two extreme and if you wish to. So for carboxylic acids, for ethanoic acid, right? Um, carboxylic anion is resonance stabilized because the lone pairs of electrons on the carbon bearing the negative charge, right? Will be delocalized uh, equally between the two oxygen. Yeah, so each of the oxygen will take on a minus half charge. Okay, but um, for the case of uh, ethanol ethoxide, um, while the O- minus has its negative charge, its electron density is increased by the electron donating nature of the ethyl group, so it's enhanced. Yeah. So um, in that case, ethoxide will be the uh, least stable amongst uh, all the conjugate bases. Ethanoate will be the most stable. Okay, so we, we sort of already established that uh, perhaps even in our lecture notes. Okay, then what about uh, between phenol and 4-methylphenol? Uh, okay, so for phenol, the phenoxide, um, we know that um, the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen bearing the negative charge will be partially delocalized into the phenol ring. Okay, so the word I use here is partially delocalized. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this, I'm going to highlight this. Okay, so um, you can write that down if you want. A uh, lone pair of electrons on oxygen uh, partially delocalized okay, into the phenol ring. Okay, why is it partially delocalized? Well, because oxygen is more electronegative than uh, the carbon, then you would expect the oxygen to retain uh, the bulk of the negative charge or the bulk of the electron density. Yeah, but um, there is still some form of delocalization because of the pi symmetry 
that the lone pairs of electrons or oxygen have uh, with the rest of the uh, p orbitals in the final ring. Yeah, so the partial delocalization is better. Uh, I mean, it. I mean, if the electron density and the oxygen can be spread out despite the fact that the carbon is less electronegative than itself, it is better than uh, not spreading out. Yeah. So what what is an example of not spreading out? Etoxide because um there isn't any orbitals in the ethyl group with pi symmetry uh, with the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen bearing the negative charge on ethoxide. Yep. Okay, so therefore uh, phenoxide will be uh, less stable as compared to ethanoate. But um, what about these two? How do we compare between the two? Okay, so we know that the lone pairs of electrons uh, on the oxygen will partially delocalize into the final ring for phenoxide, right? But if the fourth position has a methyl group that is donating, right? This will make the partial delocalization of the lone pairs of electrons on oxygen to be more difficult. Yeah, so the delocalization in this case is more difficult. If it's more difficult, what's going to happen? Um, so it will not delocalize or the partial delocalization uh, will occur to a smaller extent for 4 phenoxide as compared to that in phenoxide. Yeah, so because um, this occur, I mean the, the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen here delocalized to a small extent, it is therefore less stable as compared to phenoxide. Yeah, so that's how we uh, formulate our argument for part A. Okay, so so far we have been discussing part A. Okay, then what about part B? Um, how can we discuss for uh, part B or what are, the ish, what are the things we need to discuss? Part B will be kind of straightforward because now we are simply looking at um, how the carboxylate anion is being um, stabilized. Okay, and uh, what are the factors that's available to further disperse the electron density at the carboxylate anions? Okay, so um, for ethanol, Oh, sorry, for ethanoic acids, we know that ethanoic acid looks like this. Okay, um, it should be the least acidic amongst all. So maybe I should write it on the extreme left. Oh, sorry, extreme right. So ethanoic acid will be the least stable. And then uh, when I compare with fluoro ethanoic acid, so fluoro ethanoic acid will be the um, most acidic. And this is followed by uh, bromo ethanoic acid. Yeah. Yeah, so again, um, the focus of our answer is now no longer talking about the negative charge on the carboxylate anion being equally distributed between the two uh, oxygen. The reason is that uh, this will be common between all the carboxylate anion. So what we need to focus on would be the inductive withdrawing effects, okay, um, being exerted on the carboxylate anion by the halogens on the alpha carbon. Okay, so in this case, uh, because fluorine is more electronegative as compared to bromine, it will exert a stronger inductive withdrawing effects on the carboxylate anion via the sigma bonding framework. So it will help to stabilize uh, bromoethanoate more than that of, sorry, fluoroethanoate more than that of bromoethanoate. And of course, uh, these two contains the uh, inductively withdrawing uh, halogens. So therefore, uh, these two will be more stable as compared to ethanoate. Yeah. So the explanation uh, regarding um, the, the arrangement of the acidity of this compound right, is a little bit different uh, uh, between part A and part B. So for part A, right, we are looking at the extent of delocalization. Uh, so for, for ethanoate, anion, it will be equally distributed between the two oxygen. Uh, for phenoxide, partially delocalized into the phenol ring. And then for ethoxide, enhanced by ethyl group. Okay, but for ethanoic acid, fluoroethanoic acid and bromoethanoic acid, we are, we are not really looking at um, how the negative charge on the oxygen in carboxylic anion is being uh, equally distributed between the two oxygen because this, this is common amongst all the carboxylate anion. Okay, so rather we are looking at uh, the factor that helps to further disperse the electron density. Yeah, and um, there's one thing I probably didn't mention mention over here. In all your explanation, right, you might want to end off by saying that um, the compound with the most stable conjugate base, right, uh, that particular uh, acid will ionize to a great extent. 
Yeah, and therefore, uh, position equivalent will lie more to the right, more H plus, so therefore lower PK. Yeah, so uh, I think it will be good to end off with an argument or with an explanation, uh, something along those lines. Okay, yeah. Then um, with that, we can move on to question three. Okay, so question three was uh, also a formal A-level question. A little bit challenging back then, but uh, of course, there are certain things that we can um, discuss. Okay, so um, we have malic acids. Malic acid occurs in green apples and grapes. It's often added to beverages, confectionery to confer sour taste. Okay, so this is malic acid. Uh, I think it's quite clear that malic acid is a dicarboxylic acid and um, um, on one of the carbon, uh, there's a secondary alcohol. Okay, and then you were told that malic acid can be dehydrated to give a mixture of two isomeric alkene dioic acid with the molecular formula uh, of this. So um, you notice that uh, for malic acid, it has um, two degree of unsaturation. Okay, but um, Upon dehydration, you notice that the degree of unsaturation right, increases from 2 to 3. Okay, so therefore, uh, you know that an alkene is being formed because the question says dehydration. So they, are, they ask you to draw the structure of the alkene dioic acid isomers and state the isomerism they show. Okay, so of, obviously here we are looking at a mixture of cis and trans isomer. Okay, so uh, really depends on how you want to draw it. So fastest way to draw it, of course, is using skeletal structures. So uh, we have the trans version. So I'm going to draw the trans alkene dioic acid. And of course, if I want to, I can also show the cis version. Okay, that will look like this. Okay, so this will be the cis alkene dioic acid. Yeah, so this is trans. And this is cis. And the isomerism shown is therefore cis trans isomerism. And I will not uh, attempt to write it down because uh, I think... Uh, most of you at this stage uh, will find this very familiar. Suggest reagents and conditions for dehydration. Uh, this is you of people often get this wrong. You will need um, you will need excess corn sulfuric acid. So excess uh, concentrated sulfuric acids. Okay, and heat. Yeah. So remember that for concentrated sulfuric acid, please do not write aqueous as the state symbols. It's actually more of liquid rather than aqueous yeah because um, it contains more sulfuric acid as compared to uh, water so remember that okay yeah then for part c <coughs> pka of the two acidic groups here so the two acidic group we are looking at is the carboxylic acid function group okay so uh, you are given j okay so uh, you were not told whether j is cis or trans but you were told that one of that one of them the pka uh, is 3.0. I'm going to highlight in orange. Okay, pKa1 is 3.0. Uh, and then the pKa1 of the other isomer is 1.9. So clearly it's lower for K. Yeah, but however, the pKa2 for J is 4.4. But the pKa2 for K is 6.2. Okay, yeah. So they ask you to use the pK values to suggest which isomer J or K produce the more stable monoanion. Keyword here is monoanion on treatment with one equivalent sodium hydroxide. Yeah, so obviously the one with a lower pKa will give rise to a more stable monoanion. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it is obvious in that sense because um, when we say that the pKa1 is lower, so that means that uh, the position of equilibrium of the ionization of K will occur more to the right as compared to that of J. So therefore, K is likely to produce the more stable monoanion. Yeah. So for this, the explanation is simply because um, K has a lower pKa1. Okay. So it has a lower uh, pKa1. So therefore, uh, PoE of the first uh, ionization or dissociation, dissociation of K occur to a greater extent as compared uh, to J. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is the way um, you should be drafting your answer uh, simply by looking at the values. Yeah, so over here, we're not going to judge whether uh, uh, it's cis or trans, uh, not yet. Yeah, because whether it's cis or trans uh, is being asked in part D. Because for part D, you're supposed to draw the displayed formula of the monoanion produced from C and use your formula to suggest an explanation why is it more stable. Yeah, so if your conceptual understanding of this whole of organic chem and bonding is not so strong, 
you can at least do until part C. Yeah, for part D, uh, you will need slightly more knowledge uh, to be able to tackle it. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm just going to use the, the drawing I've drawn earlier on to tackle part D. Okay, so with this, I'm just going to remove one of the um, uh, H. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a negative charge over here. And then I'm going to put a negative charge over here. Okay, so you notice that um, for the trans N ion, right? Um, the, the carboxylate N ion uh, is opposite to the other carboxylate acid group. Okay, so um, can it be stabilized? Well, I mean, not really. Yeah, not really. Because uh, you have to think about when you want to stabilize it, what kind of factor helps to stabilize it? Yeah, so uh, bearing in mind that the other uh, carboxylate acid right, con contains an OH group, right? So probably some form of hydrogen bonding. Yeah, because they are, if they are in a trans position, the hydrogen bonding, right, will not be very significant. Okay, then on the other hand, okay, so let me redraw the cis one. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to rotate um, the bond so that uh, it becomes very clear. Okay, so um, for the cis isomer, right, if I'm going to draw the carboxyl group here, the CO here, the O here, and the H here, right, you realize that this is delta plus, delta minus, and then there will be some significant intramolecular hydrogen bonding or you can call it intramolecular ion dipole interaction that will help to stabilize the cis the mono n ion of the cis isomer oh, what a mouthful okay so because of this stabilization i'm going to expect um, um the mono n ion of the cis isomer to be uh, highly stabilized and that explains why the pka1 of k is uh, quite low okay because i need to draw the display formula so i'm just going to draw everything out so c double bond c uh, h here h here uh, c double bond o o and h and then uh, c double bond o uh, o minus uh, dot dot intramolecular hydrogen bonding delta plus delta minus so i'm going to label this i'm going to label this as our intramolecular hydrogen bonding okay yeah so uh, why is it more stable than the mono n of the other isomer because of the presence of intramolecular hydrogen bonding between the carboxylate n ion and the protonic hydrogen of the other carboxylate acid group cis to it yeah because when it is trans to it uh, such hydrogen bonds cannot be formed effectively okay so with that i think i have answered uh, part d uh, pretty completely then uh, we should move on to the next part. I think there isn't any more things to answer. Let me just take a look. Okay, display formula I've drawn, mono and I have drawn, suggest and explanation why it's more stable. Okay, so I've used this to successfully explain why is it more stable. Okay, so with that, we can move on to question uh, 4a. Yeah, so we take a look at 4a. Um, okay, so for 4a, right, you're, you were told that lactic acid is produced by the body during um, exertion. So you are given the the formula for uh, lactic acid. So um, again, um, at the alpha position, that is a secondary alcohol over here. Okay, so sec secondary alcohol. For <coughs> uh, a, uh, supposed to suggest structure formula of organic products of the reaction of lactic acid with the following reagents. Okay, so uh, PCl5. Okay, so P for PCl5, the um, alcohol will be replaced by Cl. I think. Uh, this shouldn't need further explanation. And of course, the uh, the other hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid will also replace by Cl to form an acyl chloride. Okay, so that's for part A. Then for part two, I use an acyl chloride. So you know that the reaction uh, between acyl chloride uh, will be, uh, it will be a reaction between the acyl chloride and the secondary alcohol. So I'm just going to draw this out. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to draw out the carboxylic acid over here. And then O, and then uh, uh, C O. Yes, so that's about it. Okay, so this will be the answer I'm going to draw, which is an ester. Okay, then um, ethanol, corn sulfuric acid heat. Uh, of course, in this case, you'll react with the carboxylic acid group. Uh, there won't be any reaction involving uh, the secondary alcohol. So secondary alcohol will remain as secondary alcohol. Okay, so carboxylic acid group will form an esters. So there'll be O. Uh, C2H5 uh, plus H2O but because I'm only required to draw the organic product so I'm just going to leave it as it is sodium hydroxide so it will simply be an acid based neutralization reaction okay so the secondary alcohol will remain and then uh, carboxylates 
uh, will be form O minus and remember to put Na plus because that will be the product that I'm going to isolate out which is the sodium carboxylate salt. Okay, for lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether, it will be some form of global reduction but in this case, um, only the carboxylate acid will be reduced because the OH uh, will remain as OH. Okay, so this will be OH. Okay, so uh, and then the, the carboxylate acid group will be reduced. So uh, I'm just going to draw out a primary alcohol over here. All right. Okay, so uh, moving on for part B. When lactic acid is heated uh, in the presence of few drops of corn sulfuric acid, a compound B is formed. Okay, so uh, it might be helpful um, to determine the molecular formula of lactic acid. Yeah, so uh, there will be one, two, three, three carbons. So there will be C3H, uh, and then um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, C3H, uh, six O. Let me see how many O's. One, two, three O's. So that's three O's. You notice that the number of carbon increases from uh, three to six. Yep, and question is few drops of corn sulfuric acid so maybe some form of condensation reaction because we have alcohols we have carboxylic acid okay so with that um, uh, coming into the picture what we can do here is maybe we can take this formula multiply by 2 so that will be C6H12O6 uh, subtracting C6H8O4 I will end up with 2H2O yeah so it's a double condensation reaction Okay, and because it's a double condensation reaction, how do we draw it out easily? So uh, let's try to draw this out. So O and H, and then O and H. Okay, and then I'm going to draw another carboxylic acid here. O and then uh, O, and then um, this is another O and H, right? Okay, so uh, for the condensation reaction, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to highlight like this, okay? So it will be uh, between this... H and this OH so so they will be gone as H2O and then um, this will be gone as H2O and this will be gone as H2O yeah so eventually the new bonds will be formed like this like this and like this okay so uh, if I do a quick uh, counts the number of uh, um, atoms in the ring will be one two three four five six yep so you'll be a six member ring so now i will attempt to draw a six member ring like this double bond o o and then um this will be uh um this will be six five double this is another double bond o and then o like this like this and like this okay so uh the numbering will be one two three four five six and then these are the two metal group Yep, so this this will be the proposed uh, structure for compound B. Just a very, very uh, quick way of uh, elucidating the structure based on the information given to us. Alright, so next uh, we're going to move on to uh, part C. We were told that another route to lactic acid uses the hell vohart zelinsky reaction. Okay, followed by hydrolysis. Okay, so this is an interesting uh, reaction here. So we, uh, so never mind about what it does. Uh, probably uh, just converting OH to Cl and then uh, allowing another uh, H that is uh, alpha, uh, a carbon alpha pos position to the, to the carboxylic acid group to gain another Cl. Okay, so over here we are told to um, suggest the reagents and conditions for step three. Okay, you notice that for step three, right? Um, I'm just going to highlight uh, this particular Cl become the OH and uh, the acyl chloride become the OH as well. Okay, so therefore uh, I'm, 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 I'm simply just going to expect uh, the reaction uh, to involve sodium hydroxide. Okay, so just sodium hydroxide um, heats. Yeah, because uh, it's going to allow the reaction to undergo nucleophilic substitution at the alpha carbon. So this is the alpha carbon. Uh, the Cl will be replaced as well as hydrolysis of the acyl chloride. Oh, okay. But um, because I'm getting the carboxylic acid, right? So I need to follow by um, uh, H2SO4. Okay, the reason is in the pres presence of alkaline medium, carboxylic acid form will become carboxylic anion. So I need to acidify it in order to get the lactic acid. Right. And then for part two, when one mole of um, the dichloride J is treated with ethylamine, a neutral compound is obtained. So questions tells you that you get a neutral compound. So that's a keyword I'm going to highlight, neutral. 
Okay, and then um, why is it important? You'll know that later. Uh, treatment of K with uh, ammonia under uh, pressure gives L, which has this formula. Okay, so I'm going to draw J out. Uh, so J will look like this. Uh, Cl here, and then um, acyl chloride. Okay, now between the two carbons, right? So carbon number one, two, okay, carbon number one and two, right? Uh, which carbon is more electron deficient? So I'm going to expect carbon number one to be more electron deficient. So this becomes the usual explanation uh, question that you'll be asked in A levels. Like, like why is carbon number one more reactive than carbon number two? Yeah, so because for carbon number one, right, the carbon is being flanked by chlorine and oxygen, two of the most uh, electronegative elements known to mankind. So they are inductively withdrawing. Uh, but however, carbon number two only has a Cl. So in terms of electron deficiency, carbon number one is significantly more electron deficient than carbon number two. So because of that, it will be the um, first uh, carbon or it will be the, the group that will be approached by ethylamine because I'm, I mean, what's written here is one more, right? So one more ethylamine will uh, react away all the um, Cl or replace all the Cl uh, bonded to carbon number one. Okay, so because of that, I expect uh, compound K to look something like this. Okay, like this, and uh, it's an amide, an H, okay, and then um, uh, two carbons, one, two. Yeah, and of course, an amide is neutral. That's why I highlighted the word neutral here. And then treatment of K with uh, uh, ammonia in ethanol under pressure produce L. Okay, so that will that that will uh, allow another nucleophilic um, substitution to take place. So the Cl will be replaced. Okay, so in this case for L, um, I'm going to expect um, nucleophilic substitution. So um, the the Cl will be replaced by the primary by the, by the NH3, and then eventually one of the H will be lost as a H plus. So uh, I will get a primary amine. Okay, and then the A might will will mean will be retained. Okay, so that is likely to be the structure for L. Okay, so um, final question is suggest the structures. Of course, we have suggested explain the reactivity, the relative re reactivity, or the difference in the reactivities between the two chlorine atoms. This is how Cambridge tends to um, phrase their question: difference in reactivity of the two chlorine atoms. So it's not really the atoms that react, but it is uh, the electron deficient carbon number one and two that reacts. So when you answer the question, I think the focus of your answer should be on uh, the difference in reactivity uh, between carbon number one and carbon number two. Yeah, uh, and I've already explained earlier on, carbon number one is significantly more electron deficient as compared to carbon number two because it is flanked by two highly electronegative atom, Cl and O, as compared to carbon number two, only one. Okay. Then uh, finally, okay, not yet. We have a part D. Part D is asking us, uh, or telling us that isomer or lactic acid can be synthesized from ethene in three steps. Suggest a reaction scheme is a synthesis question. Okay, how can we do that in three steps? Uh, of course, here if we attempt to number the carbon, so that would be one, two. Okay, and then uh, uh, of course, um, if we want to, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, so. Um, of course, um, there's additional carbon. Uh, so additional carbon is likely to be uh, introduced by a cyanol group. Okay, but of course, before we can introduce cyanol group, uh, we, we we need to add something across the CC double bond. Yeah, and uh, because there's an OH here, and of course there's a new group here, you probably can think of the fact that in order for, for us to introduce a cyanol group, I will need to perform some form of nucleophilic substitution on a halogen because these are the things that are clearly in your curriculum. Yeah, so because of that, uh, perhaps the first step you can do is to add in aqueous bromine. Yeah, because for aqueous bromine, it allows electrophilic addition to take place. Okay, so uh, because of that, uh, I'm going to get a Br in here. And once I get a Br in, uh, that's common number one and two, right? I can perform a nucleophilic substitution using ethanolic KCN. Okay, and then heat. And ethanoic KCN will replace the Br with CN. And this will give rise to carbon number 3. And, and then I can easily hydrolyze it to a uh, carboxylic acid using uh, aqueous HCl. Okay, heat. Yeah, so that's how you should plan your synthesis. Okay, uh, 5 marks. Where are the 5 marks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the 5 marks can be quite easily earned. And then of course, for, finally for part E, compare the first acid dissociation consisting of lactic acid and that of compound P. 
yeah so uh, again um, this will be a this should be a relatively straightforward question yeah because again we are looking at the stability of the conjugate basis so maybe I should just draw out the conjugate basis O minus versus uh, H O uh, O minus okay we are looking at inductively withdrawing nature of the OH okay so in this case uh, OH is inductively withdrawing because there because the carbon directly bonded to OH uh, does not have uh, orbitals with pi symmetry so it is not able to exert its donating nature yeah so by virtue of the difference in electronegativity value of O and C um, the OH can only um, induce a, a withdrawing effect via it, the sigma bonding framework okay so this withdrawing effect will look something like this okay and because of that um, the OH in lactic acid uh, is closer to the carboxylic anion because remember the argument here we are not going to uh, compare which we are not going to talk about talk a lot about the carboxylic anion because the negative charge is equally distributed um, between the two uh, oxygen yeah so um, because of that uh, I'm going to expect um, the OH uh, being closer the OH of lactic acid being closer to the carboxylate anion to exert a stronger electron withdrawing inductive effect on the carboxylate uh, anion and, and therefore this will be more stabilized and because this is more stabilized the acid dissociation constant uh, will take on a greater magnitude and therefore lower pKa but we don't have to talk about pKa because question asks us acid dissociation constant and not pKa okay yeah so that will be the end of part E we're going to move on to um, question 5 this question requires us to describe and explain the relative ease of hydrolysis of the fol following three chloral compounds okay so relative ease of hydrolysis three chloral compounds okay let's take a look at the difference between them so for the first one is chlorobenzene so for chlorobenzene um, the topic that you need to refer to uh, will be topic uh, 15 on halogenol alkenes or LQ halides okay uh, acyl chlorides will be carboxylic acid derivatives so this uh, current topic topic 18 and then of course um, uh, chlorometal benzene will be topic 15 as well so this topic um, 15 okay so um, we are very clear about these two um, chlorometal benzene and chlorobenzene because in topic 15 right uh, their ease of hydrolysis was highlighted uh, ease of hydrolysis here uh, it indirectly refers to how readily uh, the Cl can be replaced by the nuclear fault, in this case uh, OH minus. Okay, so how can we understand uh, about chlorobenzene? So for chlorobenzene, the usual explanation, we need to draw the phenol ring and then we need to show the P orbitals, okay, that forms um, the continuous overlap that gives rise to the characteristic of uh, uh, aromaticity in benzene. We have a Cl here. So there's, a, there's some form of orbital mismatch because Cl is contains a, a larger uh, 3p orbitals yeah so the lone pairs of electrons on chlorine right partially delocalize into the uh, phenol ring it gives rise to a partial double, double bond character between C and uh, Cl and C yeah so this partial double bond character strengthens the C Cl bond making it resistance uh, to hydrolysis as compared to the other two compounds you can also argue from another perspective so it's best to have these two um, perspectives coming together. So the electronic reasoning will be the strengthening of the CCL bond due to the partial overlap between the 3P and the 2P orbitals uh, of the carbon in the phenol ring. The other factor which you can use to complement this particular explanation uh, will be the fact that uh, the pi electron cloud is electron rich so it will repel any incoming nuclear force. Yeah, and of course uh, we know that usually for nucleophilic substitution uh, it's probably some form of rear attack if it's if you are looking at SN2 so the rear of CCL bond again um, is being uh, hindered by the presence of the benzene ring or the phenol ring okay then uh, on the other extreme we have acyl chloride okay so acyl chloride we, we all know that it is highly susceptible to uh, nucleophilic substitution especially the CL okay because the fact that um, the carbon right is bonded to both uh, oxygen and uh, Cl which will exert an electron withdrawing inductive effect on the carbon so making it significantly more electron deficient as compared to uh, the carbon in chloromethylbenzene okay so for um, chloromethylbenzene 
the carbon is only bonded to one Cl, uh, but for acyl chloride, it's bonded to Cl and oxygen. So therefore, uh, this carbon, the carbonyl carbon is significantly more electron deficient as compared to the sp3 hybridized carbon bonded to the Cl in chloromethylbenzene. Yeah, so because of that, um, the ease of hydrolysis of acyl chloride will be the greatest amongst the three, followed by chloromethylbenzene and then followed by uh, chlorobenzene. I think the explanation here is kind of like relatively straightforward. Yeah, but in order to draft them out uh, in paragraphs or in sentences, right, you have to be very clear what you're talking about. Okay, so in summary, for chlor for chlorobenzene, right, the focus is on the partial delocalization of the lone pairs of electrons on the 3p of Cl uh, with the 2p orbitals in the carbon in the phenol ring. Okay, and that gives rise to a partial double bond character, making chlorobenzene resistance to hydrolysis. Yeah, then on the other extreme, uh, for the acyl chloride, the carbonyl carbon is bonded to two highly electronegative elements, O and Cl, making the carbon highly electron deficient as compared to the sp3 hybridized carbon in chlorometalbenzene that is bonded only to one Cl. Yeah, so because of that, uh, the ease of hydrolysis will be, um, I mean, the, 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 the compound uh, that is the easiest to hydrolyze will be the acyl chloride. So this is number one followed by chlorometalbenzene, followed by uh, chlorobenzene. Okay, so with that, um, you need to know how to draft your answer out properly and um, making sure that uh, everything is conceptually sound. Okay, right. And then for question six, that is the final question in uh, this tutorial. Um, we are looking at uh, successive reactivities, the different reactivities of organohalogenal uh, compounds, uh, amines, alcohols, you can use them to exploit, you can exploit them so that uh, you can uh, react one halogen before the other. Okay, so they ask you to predict the outcome of the following transformation, drawing the structures of A and B, and they told you that B is a cyclic compound. Okay, now um, I think this is similar to question four earlier on, because for question four earlier on, right, in order to perform um, the, the, the synthesis, uh, from from ethene or rather uh the sorry the synthesis oh sorry for uh uh four C two we're looking at four C two right um you notice that the acyl chloride react first followed by uh the sp three CCL right yeah so this is exploiting the difference in reactivity between um the ease of replacing the CL in the acyl carbon as compared to the sp three hybridized carbon yeah so we're looking at the same strategy here. So we have a Cl here, and then um, an acyl chloride. Okay, yeah. So when we have this, right, um, we have a, a minor group and an OH. So this is primary amine and um, primary alcohol. You know that um, oxygen is more electronegative as compared to uh, nitrogen. So therefore, the lone pairs of electrons uh, on oxygen right, is less readily available. Uh, to be used as a nucleophile as compared to that uh, in NH2. So therefore, I would expect nucleophilic substitution uh, to begin first using the amino group. Yeah, so in so with that, uh, I'm going to conclude that for my A, right, uh, the structure will look something like this. So um, it will be an amide, NH, and then it will be a CH2, CH2, OH. Yep, and then um, sodium, what does sodium do? Okay, sodium will allow um, acid metal reaction to take place or some form of redox so as to convert um, the, the alcohol to an alkoxide. Yeah, so when sodium is added, the first compound we are looking at uh, is really um, the alkoxide. So an H O minus. And then um, when this happens, right, you undergo what we call internal nucleophilic substitution okay to replace the Cl yeah so with that um, B will therefore be a cyclic compound as what uh, was mentioned to us earlier on so it's a cyclic amide uh, with an oxygen here and like this so before we hand in our scripts we need to count the number of carbons so four carbons yes two oxygen yes one hydrogen yes two four six seven hydrogen yes yeah so that will be the answer uh, for B and uh how do we leverage on the reactivities here? So we are leveraging on um, the fact that the carbonyl carbon, which is carbon number one here, is most electron deficient. And the, amide, the primary amine 
na- nitrogen, right, the lone pairs is more available to behave as a nuclear four as compared uh, to that in the primary alcohol. Yeah. So leveraging on all this, uh, the first compound we're going to form is a, actually an amide. And then after that, in order to make the primary alcohol more nucleophilic, we need to convert it into an oxide. And an oxide is a stronger nuclear four than a normal alcohol. So an intramolecular nucleophilic substitution will then take place. Okay, so with that, uh, we are done with the review uh, of topical practice section A of uh, carboxylic acid and its derivatives.